So you've talked about humans as special. How exactly are we special relative to the dinosaurs? So I mentioned that there's, um, you know, this dramatic cognitive improvement that we've made, but I think it goes much deeper than that. So if you look at a lion attacking a gazelle in the middle of the Serengeti, the lion is smelling the molecules in the environment. It's uh, hormones and neuroreceptors are sort of getting it ready for impulse. Mm -hmm. The target is constantly looking around and sensing. I've actually been in Kenya mm -hmm. and I've kind of seen the hunt. Yes. So I've kind of seen the sort of game of waiting. And the mitochondria in the muscles of the lion are basically ready for, you know, jumping. Mm -hmm. They're expensing an enormous amount of energy. The grass as it's flowing is constantly transforming solar energy into chloroplasts, you know, through the chloroplasts into energy, which eventually feeds the gazelle and eventually feeds the lions and so on and so forth. So as humans, we experience all of that, but the lion only experiences one layer. The mitochondria in its body are only experiencing one layer. The chloroplasts are only experiencing one layer. The, you know, photoreceptors and the smell receptors and the chemical receptors, like the lion always attacks against the wind so that it's not smelled. Like all of these things are one layer at a time. And we humans somehow perceive the whole stack. So going back to software infrastructure and hardware infrastructure, if you design a computer, you basically have a physical layer that you start with. And then on top of that physical layer, you have you know the electrical layer. And on top of the electrical layer, you have basically gates and logic and an assembly layer. And on top of the assembly layer, you have your you know higher order, higher level programming. And on top of that, you have your deep learning routine, et cetera. And on top of that, you eventually build a cognitive system uh, that's smart. I want you to now picture this cognitive system becoming not just self-aware, but also becoming aware of the hardware that it's made of and the atoms that they're, that it's made of and so on and so forth. So it's as if your AI system, and there's this beautiful scene in um, uh, 2001 Odyssey of Space where, where uh, Hal, yeah. after uh, Dave starts disconnecting him, yes. is starting to sing a song about daisies, etc. And Hal is basically saying, Dave, I'm losing my mind. I can feel I'm losing my mind. Yeah. It's just so beautiful. This concept of self-awareness, mm -hmm. of knowing that the hardware is no longer there is amazing. And in the same way, humans who have had accidents are aware that they've had accidents. So there's this self-awareness of AI uh, that um, is, you know, this beautiful concept about, you know, sort of the eventual cognitive leap to self-awareness. But imagine now the AI system actually breaking through these layers and saying, wait a minute, I think I can design a slightly better hardware to get me functioning better. And that's what basically humans are doing. So if you, if you look at our reasoning layer, it's built on top of a cognitive layer. And the reasoning layer we share with AI, it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Like there is another thing on the planet that can integrate equations mm -hmm. and it's man-made, but we share computation with them. We share this cognitive layer of playing chess. We're not alone anymore. We're not the only thing on the planet that plays chess. Now we have AI that also plays chess. But in some sense that that particular organism, AI as it is now only operates in that layer. Exactly, exactly. And then most animals operate in the sort of cognitive layer that we're all experiencing. A bat is doing this incredible integration of signals, but it's not aware of it. It's basically constantly sending echo location waves and it's receiving them back. And multiple bats in the same cave are operating at slightly different frequencies and with slightly different pulses. And they're all sensing objects and they're doing motion planning in their cognitive hardware, but they're not even aware of all of that. Mm -hmm. All they know is that they have a 3D view of space around them, 
just like any gazelle walking through, you know, the desert, and any um, baby looking around is aware of things without doing the math of how am I processing all of this visual information, etc. You're just aware of the layer that you live in. I think if you look at this, uh, at humanity, we've basically managed through our cognitive layer, through our perception layer, through our senses layer, through our multi-organ layer, through our genetic layer, through our molecular layer, through our atomic layer, mm -hmm. through our quantum layer, through even the very fabric of the space-time continuum, unite all of that cognitively. So as we're watching that scene in the Serengeti, we as scientists, we as educated humans, we as you know anyone who's finished high school are aware of all of this beauty of all of these different layers interplaying together. And I think that's something very unique in perhaps not just the galaxy, but maybe even the cosmos. This species that has managed to, in space, cross through these layers from the enormous to the infinitely small. And that's what I love about particle physics, mm -hmm. the fact that it actually unites everything. The very small and the very big. The very big. small and the very big. Yeah. It's only through the very big that the sm very small gets formed. Right. Like basically every atom of gold results from the fusion that happened of you know increasingly large particles before that explosion that then disperses it through the cosmos. And it's only through understanding the very large that we understand the very small and vice versa. And that's in space. Then there's the time mm -hmm. direction. As you are watching the Kilimanjaro mountain, you can kind of look back through time mm -hmm. to when that volcano was exploding and you know growing out of the tectonic forces. As you drive through Death Valley, you see these mountains on their side and these layers of history exposed. We are aware of the eons that have happened on Earth and the tectonic movements on Earth the same way that we're aware of the Big Bang and the you know early evolution of the cosmos. And we can also see forward in time as to where the universe is heading. We can see you know Apophis in 2068 coming over, <laughs> looking ahead in time. I mean, that would be magician stuff you know, in ancient times. So what I love about humanity and its role in the universe is that, you know, if there's a God watching, he's like, finally, somebody figured it out. <laughs> I've been building all these beautiful things and somebody can appreciate it. And figured me out from a God's <laughs> perspective, meaning like become aware of, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, yeah, so it's kind of interesting. So to think of the world in this way as layers and us humans, are able to what convert those layers into ideas that they you can then like combine, right? So we're we're doing some kind of conversion. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, 